The most terrifying thing for me wasn't being an Iranian person coming to an American audience. Like, that was not hard. The hardest part for me was being someone who was very firmly rooted in underground and alternative culture in the American sense, and then trying to take that and show that to my family and friends and relatives and members of the Iranian and Middle Eastern communities, especially as a person who is out. If you research queer Iranian, queer Middle Eastern artists, you get almost nothing because it is still a um, offense that is not only haram, but it's also punishable by death. Um, and I wonder if I can go back to Iran now. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's Tara Inanlu, which is like this 21-year-old photographer in London who just got, um, uh, you know, accepted, uh, what's the word, when you're, when you're allowed to stay in the country and you don't have to go back for fear asylum? of Asylum? Yeah, she got, just got granted asylum. But um, it was really, really hard. I just had a, my first solo photo show in Maryland with all of the members of... Um, every Persian or organization that my family knows um, coming to see it and there's naked people and there's people's tattoos and piercings and it was an amazing experience and terrifying. That, that's what I mean, it, the, the whole cultural, cross-cultural thing goes both ways and if you feel more firmly rooted in the more American side of it, then it's like hard to cross back over into where you know you feel like you come from but you want to be yourself goes both ways. So that's uh -huh. Navja, uh, so your work really doesn't directly take on these things. You write poetry, you're a photographer, um, yet we were talking before we came out here a little bit that still every place you go, I'm, you're dealing with the fact that this is where you, you come from. You're also an out lesbian, which probably really breaks molds and stereotypes of what, about what people are going to think of as an Iranian American and um, you know, does that affect your work, though, in some way? Is it present? Um, two quick corrections. It's Najva. I'm sorry. Got, you got it right all the rest of the time. Um, <laughs> and um, I identify as queer, which is even more confusing. Lesbian, I think my mom would understand. Queer, she's like, what is queer? What does that mean? Um, and then you try to get into the political uh, and radical implications uh, in the gender nonconformity, and it's just a little bit over the head. But um, uh, in terms of my work, uh, I have been writing and taking photos since high school, and I was never surrounded by Middle Eastern people, ever. I mean, I just had a show last week about the Middle East, and one person in the audience was Middle Eastern, except for the friend that I brought, and I, sat, I stood there and I had to explain the Quran and how the Quran used to be a feminist text and that it wasn't just woman hating and that, you know, and because of my privilege of being so uh, alternative, I end up in these situations with people who just have these, you know, I end up getting asked some really hard questions like, how can any Muslim ever be you know, like, the, do, don't all Muslims hate women? It, it, isn't Iran a horrible place to be a woman? How can you go there? You know, and I've, I've, I lived there for a while when I was a child, and I traveled there, and I, and I have to, like, sit and explain and be like, you know, when the, ter when the Quran was written, um, women were treated very poorly, and people had multiple wives anyway, but they didn't actually treat them well. So then the Quran came along and was like, no, you actually have to be nice to all of your wives and you have to treat them all equally or you can't have more than one. Um, and, you know, it didn't say that you needed to do a lot of the things that are required by the Islamic Republic. Those are, uh, those are different uh, ways to deal with a text, but that's not necessarily in the text. Um, so I've had to answer a lot of questions. I also took a class at the New School um, where I did my undergrad called Iran, um, Politics, People, Culture. And I was the only Iranian in the class. I was the only Middle Eastern in the class. Uh, and so it was that another case of being that person where you're like, I'm going to answer all the questions now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's been the only one in a certain situation. It's just that's what happens when you write about something that, or like, when my work isn't overtly Iranian, so I just end up in all of these situations that are just like, like crazy. <laughs> I, I'm curious, does it, uh, 
when that happens to you, does it make you feel like you do want to express yourself in some way and that part of your identity, or does it make you continue to feel like your work really deals with themes around sexuality, um, you know, becoming a, a full person, it doesn't, you know, being a woman, it doesn't really deal with, you know, your ethnic identity at all, or your religious background? Um, so a, a lot of my poems are, are dealing with sexuality, uh, difficulties in childhood and parents' divorce, T typical American stories that any child would have, being alienated, uh, maybe, you know, doing things your parents didn't approve of, going out on your own, trying to be an artist in, in this economy. All of it just tough <laughs> Getting a poetry <laughs> MFA. Um, but uh, the, actually, I don't mind talking and answering the questions because I, f I don't feel as though I can answer questions on a larger scale. Like, I'm not here to tell you about everything Iran. I'm not a, um, I'm not like a professor. I'm, I didn't live there my entire life. But what I can do is familiarize you with stories that you might not know and also make them palpable to you because I'm telling you so, so many other stories that you already understand. So you maybe trust my story as like, I'm coming at it from your point of view. We're, we're both, we're both gay. Here, you can, you can hear this from me, but you wouldn't necessarily hear this from someone else. Or, look, we both have weird haircuts. Maybe you'll, you'll get this. Or, I'm in your poetry program. Like, don't worry. I'm not one of those political people. Um, whatever. So I don't mind answering questions, but I can imagine that some people definitely feel um, stuck in these types of situations where you constantly have to explain yourself. Not, yeah. not everyone. It, the, the great thing about being a white American man is that you never have to explain being a white American man. I think Wajahat Ali might have brought that up before. Um, yeah, no, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I wonder if in your future work that'll become more of an issue for you. Uh, so I don't know, as a, as a poet, how much you, you know, in our culture there usually aren't the hugest celebrities. Alas, yeah. I wish poets were. Um, whether but, you've come up uh, against this kind of... Uh, I guess. Where, do, where do you fit with this whole Hollywood? Yeah, money where do you thing? fit with this whole Hollywood um, thing? I don't. I've never tried to pitch anything to Hollywood, but um, other things. That, well, well, I've written. <laughs> I wrote a review about 300. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember writing about it from the point of view of the Persian consumer um, and how most people I knew uh, wouldn't see it. They they refused to give their money to it. Um, I remember playing Prince of Persia also when I was in first grade on the computer. It was a computer game that I was quite fond of, and I was confused about Jake Gyllenhaal, but now I, now I get it, right? <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal equals green. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the really interesting things I think Reza Asan was talking about was the connection and all the different forms of arts and literature being the way that we can connect to these Middle Eastern, um, Middle Eastern places and why those are so important. Um, and one of the really interesting things that I've stumbled upon is the blogosphere uh, and how, I don't know if people are aware, but Farsi is one of the most used languages on the internet. Mm -hmm. Now, in, you, it's right, you probably don't have the chance to pick up the phone and call someone from Iran, and you also probably don't speak Farsi. Um, however, there are translators, and I was just thinking, so as a poet, I sit here and I'm like, what if this, and what if that? But like, what if the, uh, what was that organization that found, funded, uh, that did all the translations for your book? Words Without Borders. Okay, that's what I thought it was, I didn't want to get it wrong. But Words Without Borders, you know, there are, so uh, Iranian people can't, you know, at times text messaging has been turned off in the country, at times, um, you know, every newspaper gets shut down. The, the information coming out of that country really only has one source, and that's the internet. And even still, they're just really, really good hackers. As the median age in that country is like 35. Everyone is really smart. And, um, and educated, and they don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> um, and the, so they have, so they go online. And so there's just, masses and masses of blogs written in Farsi about the Farsi experience. And there's no publishers going there to be like, mm. let me, um, there's, a, there's a great book by Persis Kareem called uh, Let Me Tell You Where I've Been on the Iranian di Diaspora. And, um, and she's, the, you know, that anthology is great. But this, the, the like raw untapped 
information. Like, I wonder what would happen if that was translated. You know, those stories of those kids that are in the country. And that was, and that was like what I was thinking of when you were talking about mm -hmm. all the ways to interact because that's, that's a disconnect where there's all this information mm -hmm. from young Iranians and probably other young Middle Eastern. I don't know the, uh, the prevalence of other languages on the internet, like Arabic, but there's a lot of blogs being written about what it's like right now. And like, I, I, the access to that, like Google, Google we, Translate can we, sometimes work. We don't, definitely work. don't get enough. We don't get, in, that's what's so great about this book. We don't get enough translation yeah, um, that's amazing. of literature and things that are written in Middle Eastern countries. When